Hello there, and welcome back to another C Sharp Intermediate tutorial with the Stride Game Engine. In this tutorial, we'll learn about scene loading. By the end of this tutorial, you've learned how to load and unload child scenes, and we'll have also learned how to load completely different scenes and swap to those scenes. Now before we start coding, let's first have a look at the rules that Stride utilizes when it comes to scenes. In our Solution Explorer, I've opened up the Scene Loading folder, and here you can see the completed and start scenes. The scene that we currently have opened is the scene that we load once the tutorial has started. And you can see that completed scene here, that is our top level scene, also known as the parent scene. What we're going to do is we're going to load in a child scene. And if I double click that, notice how it will open in a completely different tab. And that means that this child scene is not part of any other scene just yet. Now do look, you may note that this looks a lot like a prefab. However, prefabs are different in the way that you can load many of various copies of the same prefab. With scenes, however, this is not the case. Stride allows there to be only one scene within the entire hierarchy of scenes. So we have a parent scene, which can contain an infinite number of child scenes, and those child scenes on their term can also have an infinite number of child scenes. But the scenes that we have in our project can only be loaded once at the same time. Stride also prevents circular scene loading. So our completed scene A can reference the child scene, but that child scene cannot have scene A as a child on itself. Child will protect you from doing so, and it will also give you a warning that this is not possible, both in the editor as well as in code. For instance, if we would drag in this child scene right here, notice how we get a blue icon here in our scene hierarchy, our child is now a part of this uh, completed scene A. And if we would load this scene right now, if we would actually run our game, then scene A child would not be loaded, because we have to do that by code. If we would try to drag in this scene a second time, notice how it now says scene already has this parent. So this is not possible. And in code, the exact same thing happens. Stride will simply detect that that child scene has already been loaded, so it will not do anything else. Let's remove this for now, and let's get to the code. Let's open up the start scene, and this is where we start working. So at first, let's add a new entity. Let's call this scene loading. And in our code, let's go to the scene project, add a new script. We're going to use sync script for this tutorial. And let's call this child scene loading demo. We're going to attach that to our entity. Need a little typo in there, I see. Let's correct that right away. And then let's go to Visual Studio. So in, in our script, we first are going to make a variable that holds a reference to the scene that we want to load in as a child scene. We're going to make use of the URL reference. We have to provide a type. We can use scene for that. We have to include the namespace stride.core.serialization. And that is the child scene to load. So this is purely meant as a reference to which scene we're going to load. Once the actual scene has been loaded, we'll store that inside the scene or child. I'm going to call this child scene. And now inside our update, I'm going to say if input is key pressed. And if that is going to be key C for child scene, then I want to load in that scene. But I first want to check if that child scene variable 
if that is null. Because if only if it is null, only then I want to load in that child scene. Now I can do this in various ways. So we can say child scene is content dot load of type scene. And then we can say child scene to load. This is one way of doing it. And we've done that in the past with other types like uh, the prefab, for instance. But we can also use a different approach. For instance, we don't need this scene at the moment because we're using a URL reference and we've already passed in the type of this URL reference. So we don't have to specify the scene, the scenes here between the arrow brackets in this case. Now that we've loaded the scene, we're not done just yet because We've loaded it into memory, but we haven't said where this scene is part of. So we have to say that our child scene that we've loaded in here, what is its parent scene? Luckily, we can retrieve the parent scene by saying entity.scene. So the script is attached to an entity, and that entity has a reference to the current scene or the parent scene, if you will. Alternatively, let's say if we would comment this out, we could also say entity.scene, go to its children, and then add in the child scene. This is really up to you. It's just a matter of preference. What we're also going to do for this tutorial is not only loading a scene, but we're also going to keep track of how many times we've loaded this child scene and unloaded it again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a small variable here, times loaded, and that starts at zero. And every time we load in a new scene, we're going to say times loaded plus plus, so that we increase that counter. But what if our child scene has already been loaded and we press that C key again? All we have to do now is say loaded child scene is child scene dot parent is null. Now that we've done this, our child scene no longer has a reference to this parent. And Stride will go from the parent scene and look through its children, but it no longer sees this child scene there. So all the entities that are part of this child scene will no longer be rendered. However, we also want to unload the content of that child scene. Otherwise, it stays in memory. So we're going to say content dot unload, and then we'll pass in that child scene variable. Now for good practice, we could also say child scene is null. This will really set our child scene to nothing once more. And then we can, next time we press C, our child scene will be null, and then we can load in our scene again. The one last thing that I want to do, and that's where this times loaded integer comes into play, Every time we load a child scene, we can set an offset to this loaded scene. And this can be useful if your scene exists out of multiple child scenes and you want to position each child scene at a certain place. Now, when you're using the editor, you will already have placed that scene at a particular location by dragging that child scene root around in the editor. But you can just as easily do this in code. All we have to do here is let's go up here. Let's say child scene dot offset. And now we have to provide a vector three offset. So let's use a vector three here. And let's just give it zero at every coordinate. But let's move our scene up just a little bit every time we uh, load our scene. So we're just going to multiply this uh, just a little bit, not too much. So now the first time our scene loads in, it will be at coordinate 0, 0, 0. But the next time, our Y coordinate will be slightly offset. And we'll do this each time we load our scene. Now let's go back to the editor. Let's go to our scene loading entity once more. Notice we have the child scene to load property. And now we can reference an asset here of type scene. So what we have to do now is go to that scenes folder, go to the scene loading folder, 
And here, let's load in that child scene that's already been has been prepared. So that's the scene we're actually referencing now. And in case that scene was not referenced through through such a property, in case you've missed that from previous tutorials, let's go to that scene loading folder. If we would not have referenced it here in this property, this orb or this circle here would have been grayed out and you could include it by click right mouse clicking and then say include in build as a root asset. But since it's being referenced through this property, it will turn green. Now let's start our scene and see what happens. So let's pick scene loading. And if we press C, our scene, our child scene is being loaded. And if I press C again, it's gone. It's been removed from memory. And then our child scene first no longer had the parent set, which is the first thing that you want to do. And every time we press C again, notice how our child scene has been offset slightly in the air, just as a demonstration for this tutorial, of course. Now let's make another script that instead of just loads a child scene, loads a completely different scene. So we'll go to our code one more time. Go to scenes. Let's make a new script. Let's call this load scene demo. And let's go to our scene loading entity and add the component. And now let's go to Visual Studio. So just like with the first script, we're first going to make a public variable of type URL reference. We'll have to include that using stride.core.serialization. We'll give it the scene type. Then we're going to call this variable scene to load. And then in our update script, we're going to do something similar. Like in the previous script, we're going to say if input is key pressed. And if the let's call the L key from load scene, if that is being called, then all we want to say is a content dot unload. And now we have to pass in the scene that we want to unload, which is the current scene that we are in. And we have to provide the root scene. We can provide this by using scene system dot scene instance dot root scene. So why are we doing this instead of using entity dot scene? You can imagine that if you have your scenes, then and you might have loaded a scene which has a child scene, which also has a child scene, and so forth, and so forth. And you never really know for certain if the scene that you're currently at is the root scene. In the previous script, we knew that we were part in the root scene, and we could have used entity.scene. And I guess technically, in this script, we could do something similar. But if you really want to know the top level scene, which is the root scene, then use scene system dot scene instance dot root scene. And we can use that same variable again to also set a new scene because now we can say content dot load. And just like with the previous script, now we just say scene to load. And that's pretty much it for loading a different scene, or even if you want to reload the exact same scene. So let's save this, go back to the editor. Let's build our new script so that it's being referenced. And let's go to our scenes folder, scene loading, and then we'll pass in scene B. And let's also go to scene B. So we're going to go to start scene B. And if we open that, we get this uh, abstract scene, cool looking scene here. And it's not really doing anything. It's going to be loaded in. And that's the only thing there. But once it's there, we also either want to swap back to our scene or we want to reload the scene. So we're going to make a new entity here. Let's call this load 
let's call this reload scene. We're going to add a component. We're going to use load scene demo, the script we just made. And if we now reference in the scene that we're currently at, we'll simply reload that particular scene once the game has started. So let's give this a spin. Let's go to scene loading. Let's press L to load that bluish looking scene. There it is. Our previous scene is completely gone. And if we wanted to reload the scene that we're currently in, we can use the exact same scene because it had that reference to the scene that we're currently in. So if we press L again, our scene is being reloaded. And every time we press L, we can reset or reload our current scene. That's it for this tutorial. See you around for the next one where we'll have a look at animation.